We received a second report of that same shooting, not an additional shooting. And then at 2.07 p.m., the reporting party said that the suspect had fled the scene, running away out the main doors of the Harshberger building. At 2.13 p.m., Tucson fire personnel arrived at the scene to treat one victim who had been shot, and that person was transported to Banner University Medical Center. Unfortunately, in the emergency room, the victim was pronounced deceased by medical personnel. This is regarding case number U, as in Union, 2210050007. Since that time, we identified the suspect um, who has since been taken into custody. Our custody time today is 1710 hours, and it was the Department of Public Safety that took the suspect into custody after a traffic stop just outside Gila Bend, Arizona. The suspect has been identified as last of Dervish, that's D as in David, E-R, V as in Victor, I-S-H, first of Murad, M as in Mary, U as in Union, R as in Robert, A as in Adam, D as in David showing a date of birth of 3-1-5 of 1976. Uh, we received quite a bit of regional assistance today, uh, primarily from the Tucson Police Department, who is assisting us at the scene and with the investigation, uh, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and their investigators, the Pima County Attorney's Office and their victim advocates who responded both to the hospital and to the scene to speak with witnesses, and to the Arizona Department of Public Safety who stopped the suspect and took the suspect into custody again at 5.10 this afternoon. Uh, we'd also like to thank uh, the Tucson fire uh, and paramedics who responded to the scene and transported that victim to the hospital, and uh, Chief Chad Kazmar, who's uh, really been focused on that regional assist for us today. Uh, none of this would be possible with, without our partners. Um, so with that, um, I'll, I'll take a few questions if I'm able to answer them without compromising the investigation. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I don't know that I can speak to that directly. I, I don't know how close that relationship was. And it was, in fact, a professor? That, that's my understanding. Uh, we are not releasing that name. Uh, that, that can come from the hospital or from the coroner's office. Not at all, not at all. Two uh, totally different incidents. Was it gang-related? I'm sorry, no, it was not gang-related. The person that was inside the building, uh, so you're saying they were not supposed to be there, so maybe they had been warned before? It, that's what it's sounding like. Um, it was someone who was known to the staff member that, as a former student, uh, and they believed that he should not be in the building. Were there any other victims or injuries that seen at home? Not that we're aware of at this time. I don't know that, um, and I'm, I'm certain this scene is being worked right now. Uh, Tucson PD is actually helping uh, us with the crime scene, so to my knowledge, they haven't collected any of that ballistic evidence yet. Do you know what kind of weapon they used? Uh, it was a handgun, uh, but I don't have other details right now. Well, uh, according to the person who called, they came into the building uh, and she saw them and that gave her enough time to call the police. And uh, before we actually had officers on scene, uh, the shooting occurred. Yep. I don't think that's our information to share since the person had been transported out of our jurisdiction and uh, I, I believe the coroner would probably release that information. Are you the lead agency then for this investigation? Uh, we are the lead agency. Well, I am not releasing that information. Thank you, though. You sent out an update via Twitter uh, saying no need to remain in place or lockdown, but followed that up with an update saying non-essential students and staff, you're asking to leave campus or return to school. Is that right? What, what was the tone of that email? Did they have any concerns about the safety of students and staff or anything like that? We were very confident that the suspect was not in the area, um, which is why campus was closed for the evening. Basically, all, all classes for the evening were canceled, and we just wanted people to, to leave campus. We had a lot of people that were around the scene that wanted to see what, what they could see, and it was just easier for, for us to be able to ask everyone to leave. Um, and again, to, to, to my point earlier, the suspect was taken into custody at, at Gila Bend, so um, it, they, that, that person was clearly not on campus. No. 
I don't have any details on the actual arrest. Uh, literally right before I came out, and that's what actually took a few extra minutes, we were confirming the identity of the person they took into custody, um, and, and that's what we were trying to nail down. So. I don't have one with me, um, but we'll, we'll try to track one down for you. Um, they will likely be transported to the Pima County Jail, although I don't have a timeline for that. Um, and then the photo would be released uh, through them. Um, yeah, from the moment we, we took the initial call in our dispatch center to the time we got officers on scene, it was just minutes, but in that short period of time, that shooting was able to happen. Um, everything did work like clockwork, though. We got our, uh, our campus alerts out very quickly. We secured the building very quickly. And, um, and as I said, it, it's a tremendously tragic event. We, we feel so incredibly bad for, for the professor's family, friends, and colleagues. And our hearts really just go out to them. It, it's definitely a tragedy. And I, I think that it's just one of those things that sometimes you can't even predict. Um, so I'm afraid I'm a bit, a bit of a loss for words just because it is such a tragic situation. Any loss of life. Did the suspect have a criminal background? I don't have that information. I don't have anything like that, no. I don't have any knowledge of that. Were you able to identify a vehicle or something that would be able to hint that the suspect was leaving the area and how we eventually get the GPS finding outside the vehicle? And again, that's part of the investigation. So um, the investigative leads that were developed at the scene, both with our people, with Tucson PD, and with the ATF, uh, they used resources to be able to, to track that person and eventually get that stop. Absolutely. So here at the University of Arizona, we have a very robust counseling and psychiatric services team uh, called CAPS. And uh, anybody who is experiencing any sort of anxiety um, or, or just really impacted by this event, I would suggest that they get in touch with our CAPS team and, or reach out to a, a personal provider for um, any sort of crisis counseling or mental health counseling. This is obviously, as I said, a very tragic event. Uh, it's rocked everyone's world, um, including our, our first responders and uh, our partners who responded on this. So um, mental health resources are out there. Um, we actually have a lot of those on our website. And uh, I would just encourage our students, faculty, and staff to ask for the resources they need. And, and moving forward, um, if you see something, say something. Uh, Part of the reason that this ended up moving so quickly is that somebody in the building recognized the student, knew they didn't belong in the building, and called the police immediately. Um, so hopefully w our quick response um, would have potentially I think it's a possibility, but I personally don't have that information. I'm sorry. I, I don't have class lists or, or anything like that. What department did she teach with? Um, the, uh, the professor was uh, in the Department of Hydrology. Yeah. Sure. Um, and I, I, I'm flanked by, by people who have been with this department much longer than I have. And, and this is such an anomaly for the University of Arizona. Um, you know, we've had quite a bit of crime on the outskirts of campus, um, kind of outside of what I would describe as, as kind of our island, um, which is basically pretty safe. Um, and I, I think that the takeaway for a lot of people is that um, people who are angry or people who are experiencing mental health issues, and, and again, I don't know what the suspect's issue was in this particular case, but if you see something, not just say something, but do something. If you know somebody is struggling with mental health issues or anger issues, that you reach out. And it doesn't always have to be calling the police department, but tell somebody what's going on and share that information because I'm, I'm sure we're all tired of hearing of these situations occurring. Uh, it happens coast to coast, and it's happening on a daily basis, and now it's happened here. And I'm sure that's devastating for all of us um, who are, are so close to this community. It was a male professor. Sure. Um, there aren't going to be metal detectors in, in 
classrooms. There are not going to be metal detectors in buildings by and large. We do have metal detectors at major events. So um, if, if you go to any sort of event, um, whether it's, it's a musical on campus or you're going to a football game, you are going to go through some sort of security screening, but that's probably not happening in, in all the buildings on campus. Uh, what we have at our disposal are some, uh, we have a Live Safe app that um, students can use. Uh, we have a messaging system in most classrooms, like a panic button. Um, and uh, this just happened to have occurred um, in, in an office. And um, again, it would, be, it would be wonderful if we could all feel secure in our workplaces. And I think what it comes down to is that in our society right now, if, if somebody is angry enough um, or focused enough that something like this can happen, unfortunately. Classes are on for tomorrow across campus, maybe not in that building, and we're going to have to talk to the building proctor. I'm not sure how long it's going to take to process the crime scene. Um, certainly, I would, I would imagine the next four or five hours and maybe longer. So um, potentially it could be closed off tomorrow, um, but I, that's just not information I have right now. But I appreciate the question. Well, and, and I think it's all in the, the semantics, right? Um, if we lock down tens of thousands of students, um, does that mean that we then have to go classroom to classroom to classroom, and how many thousands of classrooms are we going to have to go to clear those um, and tell people it's okay and that they, they don't have to shelter there anymore? The best information we had was that the suspect was gone. Um, and as I said, it, we, without sharing a lot of investigative information, we, we had relatively good information that this person was trying to get as far away from here as possible. So um, that's why we wanted to encourage people to get off campus. If they could, if they could leave, please leave. Um, and we didn't want to lock anyone down just because of the logistical nightmare that would have occurred. I don't have details on that. Um, that. That very well may be the case. Um, as I said, right before I came out, we didn't even have a, a confirmation that we had custody. Um, and by we, I mean the Department of Public Safety Law Enforcement. Um, so I, I, it's all been very rapidly evolving. Um, I, I will tell you, I was on scene uh, within the first five minutes of, of this call coming out. So I, I was there with the officers. Um, I was there with the witnesses. And um, again, it's just, it, it's something that, it, it seems like, yes, it, it happened about three hours ago, but it was a rapidly evolving situation. And then it's trying to look at all those building block pictures and figuring out logistically what we need to do uh, for, for the integrity of the investigation. So um, I, I wish I had more information for you, but uh, I, I've shared uh, everything that I had uh, right up until the, the moment I walked out. So I, I hope that, uh, that that helps you out tonight. Um, individual departments probably know those people the best and know them on site. Uh, we have an exclusionary order system uh, here at the university, and again, information on the website if, if you want a little more detail about that. But uh, we, we do keep records on file, um, and uh, certainly we'll, we'll be going back and looking through those. To my knowledge, there's no existing exclusionary order on this person. Uh, at least two people uh, in that initial area, but there were other people that saw the suspect run from the building. Well, they're still at the scene, so I would imagine our investigators are still talking to them. Well, from the timeline, I, I, I don't know when they got on campus. I, I can only tell you when they were first seen in the building, which was that 1.59 time, and then the time they fled. Can you the sure. You're patient with me and my glasses. Uh, the last name is Dervish. That's D as in David, 
E is in Edward, R is in Robert, B is in Victor, I is in Ida, S is in Sam, H is in Henry, and then first phonetically M is in Mary, U is in Union, R is in Robert, A is in Adam, D is in David. I believe so. Uh, Dervish, I'm solid on uh, first name. It's you've got my best guess. Sure. Three one five of nineteen seventy six. Sure. Any other questions? And if you need business cards for the spelling of my name, I'd be happy to give those out so you don't have to write that down. Nobody wants me to spell that. Okay. Uh, anything else I can answer for anyone then? I, again, just uh, we, we appreciate the, the care and concern of the community. It, it's just such a tragedy to have this happen. And uh, we'll, we'll be the primary agency on the investigation. And any, any updates that we can provide, uh, we will certainly do that in the, the coming days. But thank you so much for being here. And thanks for being patient while we tried to get as much information as we could to share with you. We really appreciate you and what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.